Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, hump day, December 18th, 2019. So please keep in mind that it is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 18th of December, that does not mean it has to resonate on that day. Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that time. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to cough. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. So um, I don't really have pre-shuffle today uh i was sitting here just collecting the you know channeling and and just like free shuffling in my hands and nothing was falling out so i was like all right cool so i'm just gonna like move forward and we'll get into it um in during the actual you know video um i will say that the color is still very much yellow for the collective um and spirit is telling me that we are still in the process of redefining our willpower, um, redefining ooh, who we are and what that is for us. What is our will? Um, working on reintegrating our will with the will of the divine. Um, I'm hearing the will of the divine consciousness. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the collective consciousness interesting so for a lot of us i feel like we're getting into this point in our awakening process especially yes thank you spirit especially as we get into moving towards we'll move towards 2020 and as we cross over into 2020 um a lot of the focus for us especially those in this line of light work you know the who are actually taking up the um the task of being a light worker in some way we're right now in the process of reintegrating into what the divine will is and also what the will of the collective is which technically is i mean ultimately is the process of reintegrating or or, or coming back together as a whole um you know as as one because we all come from one source right and uh aluna ash put out a great really uh, uh, an energetic update yesterday and she described it as you know we are all just our universe is one being basically of consciousness that splits fragments you could even say she didn't use that word i'm using that word it like fragments into into in infinite amounts of you know individual pieces in an effort to experience and expand and grow and then it all comes back together and we're in that process right now of coming back together okay so we're integrating into the whole we're integrating into the collective consciousness we're integrating in with into and with divine will and then the other thing that because i was definitely seeing i'm still seeing yellow so the main color for the collective right now is yellow which is oh i'm sorry it's down here which is the solar plexus but then also um what i was seeing with that is the heart or green so the heart chakra is very much the focus right now especially in terms of your willpower um because again we're refocusing within the lens of divine will and the collective consciousness yes okay that's really cool i like that you guys um and it's interesting because even what i have here what i've landed on on the deck is the three of wands i don't uh, Ooh, wow. Okay, so it's the three of wands, but the three of on one side, the three of wands, it makes sense because the three of wands represents um, being on, in my opinion, as a reader, it represents being on your path. But then also in general, it can remember represent um, waiting for a return on an investment in some way, maybe even preparing to receive a return on an investment. Also, I see the three of wands as um, um, uh, 
continuing with some sort of momentum towards something that you have chosen, a path that you have chosen, something that you desire to create or move towards. And then on the other side of the deck is none other than death. And I actually didn't look at this side of the deck until just now. This is this is cool. So, But this is a transformation. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, for some of you, it is time to face the reaper, you know, um, <clears throat> and that can seem scary, especially if you're up against some um, strong opposition, especially if you've been, you know, living a life um, of destruction, maybe even, um, <laughs> I'm hearing debauchery. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I am not judging you here because I myself do love a good old debaucherous good time. <laughs> okay. So like no judgment from me whatsoever, but, um, some of you, uh, might be struggling with this right now, this reintegration of your willpower with divine will, because you might be starting to realize some of the ways that you have acted, some of the ways that you may have presented yourself, some of the ways that you may have appeared in the world, some of the things you may have done. Um, I'm getting very specifically very selfish or narcissistic acts. Some of you are, are awakening from that. And it's... <laughs> It's a hard truth, you know, it's a real, it's a hard realization. And, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, um, f realizing where some of these things may have come from and some of the people that may have taught you certain examples and, and whatnot, whatever that may have influenced you to act and conduct yourself in certain ways. And that might be a hard thing to handle as well. That might be really hard to come to terms with because some of these people might be really or at least may have at one time been very um, near and dear to you. That could be someone that you really admired, really looked up to, and now you're kind of, but see, but see, but now if you are in that energy, now you're seeing them for the human that they are. And this, this, this if, you, if, if you are in an energy where you're starting to come to terms with a lot of the things that you may have learned that aren't quite up to snuff, we'll say, and these people that have taught you that you may have put them on a certain pedestal, may have seen them kind of like godlike, is what I just heard, um, superhuman even, and now you're starting to realize that they are no more or less human than you. They they have faults. They have. They're, they're sometimes, I mean, they, they're, they're just as wrong as maybe the next person and get, don't get me. And, and, and please keep in mind that I, me personally, I believe that there really is no such thing as right or wrong. It's all just about experience and perspective and perception. Um, but yeah, that could be a really a cold, hard truth that you might have to come to terms with, but it's all a part of the transformation here. Yes, which is all a part of the journey. Yeah, cool. So it looks like we did get a pre-shuffle energy. <laughs> but see, that's just the nature of this deck because this is the vice versa deck. So there are images of the cards on both sides. Whereas if you have like, say, this traditional, this is the writer, this is the golden universal tarot. They're all the images are all on one side. Yeah, <clears throat> the other side is just is blank. But okay, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> okay cool so with all of that said let's get into it and i am fully decked out in unicorns today i have got this shirt which was sent in by a viewer which is so cute i love it and then i have this necklace that my very very one of my very best friends nat natalie you guys have probably seen her i've posted images of her on instagram or whatnot but look she got me this for christmas isn't it cute it's a unicorn with a cute little rainbow gem on there. And then of course I've got my favorite unicorn mug. I am fully decked out in the unicorns today, y'all. A boop. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go, kids. Let's get into the rest of the reading for today. And please excuse the, the construction across the street. They are fully immersed in building in rebuilding this new building here, which at one point was building 144 on my block, 
I, I'm right across the street from building 144. Um, I can only imagine, I, I, I can assume that it's probably still going to be 144, but yeah, now. <laughs> okay, here you go. <clears throat> Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, December 18th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. We're giving this three shuffles today. So here we go. One. <laughs> A two. <laughs> A three. <laughs> three. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit. What are we what are we discussing today? What are we discussing today? All of that. Whoa. Okay. But that's all I need to take. Alright, cool. Ooh, alright. Overall energy. Okay, okay, okay. We have the world here. On the other side is the ace of cups. Now I'm getting a very strong, <laughs> very strong indication with this Ace of Cups that could, there could be someone admiring you or you could be admiring someone else from afar. But the reason why you might be admiring this individual or they may be admiring you from afar is because they are still in the process of learning to love themselves sufficiently and efficiently. Okay. But also... Keep in mind, if we're speaking in terms of divine counterparts, twin flames, however you want to describe it, you yourself are still in the process of learning to love yourself efficiently and sufficiently here, okay? We have the Two of Wands, the Eight of Swords, the Five of Cups, yep, the Tower, the Devil, the Six of Swords, and the Ace of Swords. Oh man, I really like this energy. I really like this a lot. The Two of Wands feels like it is the, the main energy right now. This almost feels like what I want to say is this, this is such a strong part of the energy right now that it almost feels like this is part of the overall energy. Um, but it, I guess what I should say is it's your main focus right now, the Two of Wands, redirecting yourself. And it's so interesting because the three of wands was at the was on the top of the deck, and that even though I was not consciously aware that I had pulled, I had pre shuffle energy. Turns out that we had that pre shuffle energy, and so this is that two of wands energy that I was discussing in relation to the three of wands because the two becomes before the three, and the two of wands is that moment where you start to make a decision. Okay, and I really do feel like, I just saw 13, 13. 13 is a number of death. And then the death card was at the bottom of the deck. Wow. In that pre-shuffle in the beginning, it's all about transformation. Okay, so your main focus right now is choosing a new path, choosing a new direction. And I do kind of feel like, I do kind of feel like you already have an idea or a strong notion as to which direction you want to move in. So for some of you, yes, for some of you, this is about choosing a new path. But for others of you, this two of wands actually kind of feels like deciding how to go about it. Because then I'll take you, I'll take you one step back from the two of wands to the ace of wands, right? In which you have some sort of inspiration. So it's already as, well, yes, okay. Okay, now it's already as if you've chosen, you know which direction you want to move in. Again, for some of you, you're still trying to figure that out. You're not quite sure. But the very strong message, I'm the strongest message that I'm getting here is that some of you already have chosen. You've already hit that Ace of Wands energy or you've already hit that moment where you were 
inspired to move in a new direction, to take on a new creative project, maybe even to reinvent yourself, okay? And that is coming through here, but it's coming through in terms of the Ace of Swords. So for some of you, so what I'm getting here, if you are resonating with this strongest part of the reading of the energy that I'm feeling in which you've already chosen, you know which direction you want to move in. It's really at this point, just about trying to figure out how you're going to go about doing that. This is the Ace of Swords. This is the truth. It's almost, it's like it, it with this Ace of Swords energy, the Ace of Swords is the aha moment, is the epiphany, is the light bulb, is truth, is honesty, is seeing things clearly as for what they are. It's also being truthful, is also speaking some sort of truth, conveying some sort of truth. But what I feel like here is what I was seeing in terms of the Ace of Wands in having some sort of inspiration, uh, some sort of again yeah an epiphany um cr to move creatively getting that creative drive getting that spark of creation to move in a certain direction it's now being reflected in your reality as the ace of swords because it has become solidified in a way that's what it feels like it's like you cannot deny this anymore you know exactly what direction you want to move in now is the time to make the choice and how you want to get there how you want to take action in terms of this direction let's go a little bit deeper here we have the eight of swords the five of cups and the tower so some of you are st so i'm not I'm, I'm, okay i'm not going to say some of you anymore i'm going to say whomever is resonating with this re message right now you're still in the throes of a tower moment okay um and so what i'm getting here is many whomever this is you are the patriarchy, the um, okay, patriarchal societal values or views are still being thrown, overthrown, in your life right now, in your reality, and that's what I'm seeing with this tower. And I do feel like some of you are, or who, uh, yeah, I do feel like you're. Some of you are still in this process of dealing with the emotions five of cups and you might feel you might feel stuck or trapped you might feel like you are a prisoner of your past of the past societal patriarchal what bullshit what not whatever that you maybe really really played into okay and and, and i want to i really want to say please stop beating yourself up about that you were indoctrinated okay this is this is what we were taught and you're realizing the death and destruction and the, the toxicity here with the devil. The devil is here, right? But also with this three of these three spilled cups, this is society. This is this is social norms. This is um, this is hive mentality. This is like f running with the pack, doing keeping up with the status quo. You're realizing how toxic all of this was. It has spilled, or it is still in the process of spilling out. But keep in mind, guys. <clears throat> keep in mind, whatever. <clears throat> excuse me whatever mental prison you may feel like you're in it's just an illusion all is not lost here you do still have these two cups behind you okay so if this is in terms speaking in terms of maybe a divine counterpart or maybe just a lover or a loved one or someone that you really care for or a certain a certain I don't know, a certain way of expressing yourself or a certain uh, career path that you want to uh, follow or a certain creative expression that you want to follow. It, it, I mean, it's not like that's really gone away. It's still there. It's still here. And especially if we're talking in terms of divine counterparts, twin flames, whatnot, whatever, if you guys still feel that connection for each other, then obviously it is a true connection despite whatever energy whatever bullshit may have happened between the two of you up until this point, right? If the connection is still there, it's a real connection. It's obviously not going away. So, <laughs> God, Eric, take your own damn advice. But, <laughs> okay, fine. But it's not, I mean, it's still there. All is not lost. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. And then we have the devil with the six of swords and the ace of swords. All right, but see, here's the thing, guys. Now you're really starting to see the devil for who he truly is or what it truly is or what it really may have been for you. And you're moving away from it.
And this is the perfect example of something that I have come to really, really, really believe in. The only way you are going to be able to heal something in your life is if you're aware of it. If you're not aware of it, if you can't see it, if you can't even, if you don't even know it's there, how the hell are you going to heal it? Well, here you go. Here's your awareness. Ace of Swords, Six of Swords, the Devil. You're literally moving away from the devil, toxic energy, codependency, addictions, narcissism, even whatnot. What you're moving away from this with the Six of Swords because you have the truth, the knowledge, the understanding of what it truly is and what it represented for you in your life. And it's the only way that you're going to be able to move forward from this is if you're aware of it and you are. You have this wisdom, this ace of swords, this, 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 this sword of truth to cut away what no longer serves you, what is toxic, what keeps you hidden, what keeps you down, what keeps you low in vibration. Yes? Now, what I will say with the world here, what I will say is, please, do not try to rush this, okay? One of the things that this side of the world can represent is someone just trying to rush through a portal, someone trying to rush a completion, a closure, a, a get a, a rush into getting some sense of closure, rush into some sort of ending. You can't do that, okay? You have to understand that everything is within divine timing, all right? And honestly, if you want to if you want to if you want to say it's god if you want to say it's source if you want to say it's creator if you want to say it's the angels if you want to say it's the universe who cares <laughs> it doesn't matter how you want to label it but whatever <clears throat> however you want to really label it describe it the higher power the source that we all come from knows the exact timing that is necessary and yes, is going to keep that hidden from you. Why? Because time is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. And also, you really don't need to consciously know when, why, or how something is going to happen all the time, even ever sometimes. Why? Because that's only going to, if you were to know that, that could only really like from from a certain point of view, I'm sure there are many other reasons why as to why this is so, but at least from my point of view right now, and what I want to tell you about it is the more you know, the greater the chance of you putting resistance into the situation or anticipating the situation, which is also going to create resistance, right? Or also, if you know what is coming and when it's coming, then you probably wouldn't work for it. You'd probably just sit back and be like, oh, well, I know that's going to happen anyway, so I really don't need to do anything about it, right? How intrinsically human of us is that? <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So let's get, um, let's look a little deeper here. Let's get a little clarification, uh, some greater definition. And I'm going to use the Epic Tarot. I've really been drawn to that deck recently. Um, and <clears throat> this kind of does, this deck is depicted differently. It's, the, it's a traditional Tarot deck. It's based off the Rider Waite deck. However, the imagery conveys some, a little bit of a different story. So I really want to use this deck right now. I want to look a little deeper into this Eight of Swords, Five of Cups, and the Tower for you first. Getting some reassurance for you. Also getting some greater clarity for you here. As you really move through this tower moment. The oligarchy. The oligarchy is being overthrown. And this is going to happen energetically first. Before you actually start to see physical representation of this. But you see how those two men are being thrown from the tower? I mean, the oligarchy, the patriarchy, it's all being overthrown with the with truth. The, you see that eye there? Wow. <laughs> One last shuffle. I just heard a victim of your circumstances. Some of you do feel very, very victimized right now. You feel, you, feel, you feel very slighted. You feel very betrayed, deceived. And that's natural. But understand 
but understand that you are not bound by this and you are definitely not bound by your past. You, if you feel like you are, you are stuck, like you can never be anything more than you are right now because of the things that you've done in the past or the things that you've experienced in your past, that is an illusion. You have all of those swords surrounding you in this eight of swords energy. You have the ability to cut yourself free, but you have to be willing to take that damn blindfold off. Right? Okay. One last shuffle. And it looks like, it absolutely looks like that blindfold could be ripped off. Or maybe it has already been ripped off with that eye right there. See that eye? Yep. The eye of truth. The all-seeing eye. The, I'm hearing it's the eye of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, understanding. Very nice. Okie dokie. So let's look a little deeper into this for you here. The Empress. Oh, that's beautiful. Giving birth to... Jeez. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, wow. This is a lot. Ah, there's death. Okay. Overall energy is the Hermit. Virgo energy. All right. But, I mean, that's the sign really isn't important here. But I am hearing it is Virgo energy, so it might you might be a Virgo, you might be dealing with a Virgo, or just the the, the qualities of Virgo might have might be really strong here for you. Oh look, the Ten of Wands. Yes, look, the Ten of Wands was just showing itself here with the Six of Wands. Ooh, cool. Okay, but then also the Ten of Wands is here. Now, the one thing that I wanted to say about this deck is with the wands suit, it is the wands, wands is about, um, it, it could represent spirituality, it could represent passion, it could represent uh, lust, um, uh, creativity, sex, it can also represent uh, spirit. But in this deck, it's the, the wands suit is depicted as books where you are writing a story. And here in this situation here, this story, or maybe even this chapter of your life, personally, I really want to call it the story. This story has reached its end. It's completed. It's done. And it's time to turn a new page. No, no, screw that. It's time to start a whole new book, guys. That's literally what I'm literally seeing the last page of a book, and I'm seeing that page being turned, and then the, the, the back cover of the book closing, and now just whoosh, pushing that away to start the new one. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All right. This is great, you guys. This is really, really great. So I'm going to start here. You have the Empress with the Star and the Wheel of Fortune. So the first things first. The first thing I felt, especially when the Empress came out, was abundance. Okay. Um, unconditional love. It's, regardless, regardless of whatever has happened in your life up until this point, you are in fact lovable. You are in fact deserving of all the good things. You, you can redeem yourself, okay? You can, you just have to go through this process of awakening and redemption and healing. Now we don't have judgment here. That's what that, you know, transformation, Phoenix, from the ashes risen type energy is but we do have death okay here's death right here so this is definitely that transformation but what i'm getting with this is uh, some of you I, this does kind of feel like you're in a little bit of a cocooning phase um but this is a rebirth this is a rebirth especially between the empress and death this is absolutely death and rebirth you guys look at that transformation going into rebirth i do feel like this is definitely still a, in a gestational period for sure that's what this feels like here but you're about to emerge and i, I just heard fairly soon okay wow and then we have death with the lovers and the sun here all right which is which is really beautiful also coupled with the knight of pentacles and the four of pentacles so um in this deck the court cards are depicted as um 
mythical creatures, right? So pages are unicorns, knights are griffins, which is this this thing, this like bird mammal creature type thing. Uh, queens are phoenixes and kings are dragons. Oh, wait, and then here you have the king of swords also. Yes. So the king of swords is representing the energy of truth. Um, is uh, The judge is representing seeing things clearly for what they truly are, making a, a, a logical and balanced decision based on what is best for you, maybe even what's best and serves the highest good for the collective, but mainly yourself, and then making cuts in terms of that. Okay, so I really, I'm definitely getting a sense of maturity here. You're definitely being asked to be as mature as possible, to work on seeing things as clearly as you possibly can in order to make the best decision moving forward. I'm getting an energy of making a, an executive decision here, okay? Coupled or in, in relation to these two cards, you the, what the Four of Pentacles here is saying, because the Four of Pentacles can be a pretty icky card. Um, and as you can see, the imagery on this is not the most inviting. The, the, the Four of Pentacles can be a very miserly card. It can be a very stubborn card. Um, you know, it could mean holding on to something that no longer serves you, holding on to something for fear of lack, for fear of losing it, for, uh, out of feeling impoverished. Um, but here, what I feel like is the Four of Pentacles is speaking to standing your ground, holding your foundation. I do feel like if you are in this energy, if you're resonating with this in whatever way it, res it would resonate for you, then you have really, ha you really have a solid foundation to work from right now, to move slowly but surely to build from with this Knight of Pentacles. Because the Knight of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles can be a very, very slow moving card it is it's the slowest moving night in the deck okay and for some of you i do feel like with this knight of pentacles and the four of pentacles in the past you may have been a very procrastinating energy you might have refused to wake up um you and, and i'm getting yeah i'm getting that in the past you used logic to your advantage but it was to the advantage of staying in a place where you once were like in an energy of refusing to wake up but now that's changing especially especially with this king of swords energy so if you feel like this is more because i do feel like some of you for some of you this is an energy of um of being uh stuck and rooted and and not letting go of something but with this king of swords energy here this king of swords energy and what this is asking of you what this may also be representing for you this is the energy of releasing yourself from this stagnancy from procrastination from from choosing not to move and from holding on to something for dear life that is no longer serving you okay wow okay so now that's excellent that's excellent guys so here we go let's look at this here oh but also i want to say with the hermit being the overall energy this is you walking your own path doing what is right for you Okay, maybe even cocooning. cocooning. I, like I said, I do feel like some of you are still very much in a cocooning phase. Isolating yourself, though. Okay, um, I also heard taking matters into your own hands. You also, especially with this King of Swords energy, you might be in an energy of seeking wisdom on your own, not really looking to others to, to, to provide answers for you, but going on your own path, on your own journey to find your own answers, to find your own truths, and to, to come to your own conclusions about things rather than other what other people may have incessantly or consistently told you indoctrinated you towards uh, drilled into your head blah 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 that kind of energy all right guys so now let's look into the devil the six of swords and the ace of swords let's get a little more clarity on that for you here there's that three of wands again Excellent. Whew. Oh, but then there's the Eight of Swords. You feel like your past is haunting you. Okay. I'm going to take three cards from the top of the deck. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, looky here. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles. 
Now, the big message that I'm getting from the Queen of Pentacles here is know your worth and don't settle for anything less. And this is, this is what this is teaching you. So there could be a feminine individual. This could be your counterpart here. If you are, if you are on a twin flame journey, if you are resonating with divine counterparts, whatnot, however you want to describe it, this is either your divine counterpart in the feminine, like your feminine counterpart that is showing you this, that is urging you to take up this lesson of knowing your worth. Um, or it could just be the divine feminine energy as a whole. It could it, it it either could be a counterpart, or it could be the divine feminine energy, or it could be a combination of both. Because the, we are very much in the process of integrating. Well, I should say, thank you. They are, the spirit just corrected me. Reintegrating masculine and feminine energy together, but we are reintegrating it because we are doing this from a place of balanced, whole, and healthy masculine energy and balanced, whole, and healthy feminine energy, right? So that's making it, that we're, we're reintegrating it from that point of view. Regardless, this is the feminine saying to you, know your worth. Yes, you have the eight of swords that came out, the three of wands, and ooh, Ooh, looky here, the queen of swords. So you got that masculine and feminine right here, right here, the king and the queen of swords, okay? Um, so, and then greater clarity is the eight of wands, the tower again, and the hermit again, okay? So right now, you're in the process of breaking free. You are, spirit is working on trying to reassure you that this is absolutely a part of your path. I know this does, this, this, it may not look like it, but this is the three of wands, or in this case, the three of books, okay? You are absolutely on your path. You might be in a little bit of a restful phase. What I'm getting with this three of wands here is in, in terms of writing your new book, you might have gotten, you, you know, we closed out the old book and you, you had this inspiration. You're getting started. You started writing already or you started getting ideas, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. And now you're kind of in this restful period where, okay, you might be in the process of integrating a lot of the new things that you have learned recently. You see how these people are just kind of like st sitting, laying there. Looks like they're, they're like, you know, they're taking a break from writing whatever is their new novel or what. Uh, come on, focus, please. Focus. There you go. You see, they're just kind of, it looks like they're just kind of like resting. Oh, come now. I just got you to focus. <laughs> Why won't you focus? Uh. Anyway, you guys get it. Okay. Um, okay, but it does kind of feel like you're at a standstill. It really does. With this Eight of Swords. And this Eight of Swords is definitely giving me an energy, especially with that big creature right there with the sword in it. It feels like... It's like your past is haunting you, like you might be having nightmares or you just feel bound by the past. It's almost as if you keep, you, you know, you try to move forward, but there's always this, this enemy, this monster just kind of looming over, un, over your shoulder. But what the Queen of Swords is saying to you is, stop that. Cut that shit out. You don't have to be bound by your past. And it's, and, and it's definitely coming through as the queen of swords. Now, this is the feminine energy definitely coming through here, but it's definitely coming through in a very stern way, especially since I do see the queen of pentacles, which is in the overall energy here, and the queen of swords as besties. Because neither of them will take any shit from anybody. The queen of swords, however, she'll fuck you up. <laughs> okay, the Queen of Pentacles is a, is a lot more nurturing, loving, and caring, and compassionate. But yo, that Queen of Pentacles, you rub her the wrong way, she will she will not be nice about it. Okay, because that is the Queen of Pentacles is very much an energy of tough love. But this Queen of Swords, man, she ain't playing. She never was playing. Okay, you might think this is cute, but she is not amused whatsoever. But the way she's coming through here is saying, look, just stop the nonsense and cut it, cut it out. Just cut it out. This devil, this, this devil energy, whatever it is you feel like is looming over your shoulder, whatever you feel like is, has got you bound by your past, just stop. 
That is literally the devil continuing to creep in. You have the power to let this go. You have to choose to do so and just make the cuts, not even argue about it, not even try and be diplomatic about it. Fuck that. Because you see, you see quite clearly with this King of Wands here. I'm not I'm sorry. Ooh, interesting that, that that was the King of Wands, but it's the King of Swords. But you see quite clearly with this King of Swords what exactly needs to be cut out of your life. So now it's time to stop fucking around and just do it, says the Queen of Swords. <laughs> okay. Greater clarification, you have the, the, the Eight of Wands, the Tower, and the Hermit. It's time for you to just start walking your own path. Because the air is open and clear. As this tower energy moves forward, the, the energy is clear for you to get going and walking your path. Okay? Wow. Know your worth. <laughs> okay, so... Now, with all of that said, let's get to the closing remarks here. So we're going to go with your final closing message from Spirit. Oracle Guidance. No, just go with Oracle Guidance. Okay. Dragons. Got it. I was, normally I would go to the Golden Universal Tarot and I would get, you know, closing message from Spirit, but it all came through right there. So... Let's get your oracle guidance done. You know, I just saw there is a level of compassion here. In this hermit energy. Let's see if it'll focus, but... Come on, you. Focus, 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 focus. Come on. There it is. So look into this guy's eyes. You see how compassionate he is? It's almost as if he's offering. So I feel like this... I'm going to be honest with you guys. I feel like this could be someone who may have been on their own solitary journey, coming back into your life, having learned a lot having gained a lot of wisdom and wanting to apologize, wanting to make an offer, wanting to say, I'm sorry. I oh, Wow. Okay. What I'm hearing very clearly is I realize what I have done to you and I am not proud of it. And I'm very, very sorry. And I want to make amends. That's what I just heard from this hermit energy. And the hermit does represent Virgo. So this could be a Virgo, but it doesn't have to be. I will say that this is its most likely the masculine counterpart in your situation. Oh. Okay, I'm going to give one more shuffle, and then we'll get your Oracle Guidance to close out this reading. Here we go. Oracle Guidance, please. Spirit and the dragons. Dragons, dragons. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. So we have Sunshine Yellow Dragon helps you to help animals, serve animals, heal, respect, and understand them. Well, this is an interesting message. The Animal Kingdom. So for some of you, the next part of your journey might be connecting with the Animal Kingdom. Maybe connecting with the animal spirits, your animal guides, focusing on the messages that the animal kingdom may have for you, working with animals in some way. Okay, so let's see what this is. Sunshine Yellow is a fifth dimensional dragon. 68. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, for some of you, there are a lot of clear messages that are working on coming through into your life from animal totems, from animal spirits. I'm seeing specifically, there's a raven up here, I believe. See that? Okay. That might be um, the raven and that blue jay, actually. That might be a, a really potent message or have a potent message for some of you. Okay, this says, 
We share our planet with a great variety of creatures who are all on a soul journey, just as we are. Like us, animals come from a, myriad, from a myriad of star systems and planets. They all incarnate on Earth to experience, learn, teach, and serve. Our task as humans is to cooperate with, look after, and learn from the animal kingdom. Fifth dimensional yellow dragons work with Archangel Fayel, Fel, oh, I'm sorry, Felyai, Felyai, F H E L Y A A. Oh, I'm sorry, Y A I, Felyai, the angel of, the, I'm sorry, the angel, the angel of animals. They send bursts of sunny yellow light into the auras of those of us who love and honor animals and help us to assist and heal all creatures. They are currently working assiduously to touch. Uh, yeah, to touch the hearts of those who need to understand how to treat animals with respect. They also battle animals in their sunshine. Oops, no, not battle. They also bathe animals in their sunshine yellow light to soothe and heal them so they can fulfill their soul destiny. And actually, you know what I realized? That this is that type, that color yellow that I was seeing with the collective here. Somehow animals are gonna are, can be really helpful. Pay attention to them. And I'm getting specifically for some of you, it's dogs. But it could be the sense of loyalty that dogs represent that you might need to take some lessons from, learn from. Okay, the guidance with this card says, Drawing this card invites you to open your aura and allow sunshine yellow dragons to pour light into you, containing the keys and codes to understand, at a profound level, all the creatures of this planet. <gasps> oh, this has way more... Oh, okay. Okay, so this is about understanding all understanding, respecting, and loving all creatures for who they are, however they show up. And dogs were coming through specifically because dogs are very unconditionally loving. They just love everything and everyone. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a good heart, as long as you are, you know, giving out good energy, because let me tell you, a dog can sniff out some nasty energy. And yes, pun intended, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the unconditionally loving nature of dogs. I guess it's just being represented that way because it's easier to understand that, that, we, are, that we are learning to love and integrate. Um, okay, drawing this card invites you to open your aura and allow sunshine yellow dragons to pour light into you, containing the keys and codes to understand at a, at a profound level all the creatures of this planet. Then send, I don't know, I think that's a typo. They send these dragons to all humans who need to change their relationship with animals. See the minds and hearts of these people blazing glorious yellow as they expand their perspective and see animals for who they truly are. It is important to visualize all animals in the world being touched by sunshine yellow dragons and lighting up with hope. Be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along with these dragons. There are typos all over this, but <laughs> be a sunshine yellow dragon bridge of light along, I'm sorry, be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along with these dragons can travel to help animals everywhere. That does not make sense. You will occur good karma as you assist your fellow creatures. Okay, there you have it. That, that was weird, but anyway. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>